Ahoy there, Mythgard fans! I'm Dead Broke Nerd, and I've got another deck for you guys today. Uh, this is my adaptation of Invesi's uh, Mono Orange Deserts list uh, out of Rainbow's End. I looked at it, and I don't have all the cards for it, so I made some adjustments of my own. I think there's plenty of great ways to play this deck. I think there's lots of awesome choices for Mono Orange. Um, so just because you don't have one or two of the Mythics doesn't mean that the deck's not worth playing. I have a really fun game attached to it as well. I'm going to briefly describe how this deck works. Again, it's not my original creation, but I have tinkered with it uh, to fit the cards that I do and don't have. Um, so here it is. Uh, the basic idea is that it's kind of a, you know, uh, desert-themed uh, token generating thing, like most orange decks are, or at least some of them are. Um, and then, of course, uh, the cool part is running Rainbow's End because there's actually some really great enchantments, a lot of the upgraded desert enchantments, uh, that you can actually pull off of Rainbow's End. And pairing with that is some really great divination effects to help you stack one of your enchantments on top of the deck to really capitalize on the card draw from drawing an enchantment. So you can make sure that you get that Rainbow's End value uh, at the end of your turn by using the divination. So we're using Lamp of Wonders. This is one of the early... Um, um, cards that I pulled, mythics that I pulled, and I was kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'll ever use this. Well, it's great in here. It really is uh, great with Rainbow's End. Uh, similarly, of course, we're going to be running the um, Serendipity of Freet for that big Divination 3 and the 4-4 stats for 3. That's a really great card. Uh, the the one life loss usually isn't crazy, crazy relevant. Um, hopefully, you're able to, to seal out some games before that. Uh, and then, you know, it's basically just good stuff orange after that obviously for the mythics these are the ones i have uh armageddon angel lavish proxy uh which is just an incredible card uh to heaven and back three mardi Corps. i'd say these are pretty essential to this list um they're one of the big payoff cards for actually using deserts uh, Temptations, you can one, run just one or none. I really like them, so I run two. Um, Seal of Exile, you can run one. If you don't have uh, any Temptations, you can run more. The thing with this one, though, is that it does sacrifice your maximum uh, mana and a gem. So, of course, you really don't want to play it unless it's on a high priority target uh so i'm only running the one here parry at the gates draws cards soma oasis again this is another uh kind of card that if you really want if you're going to play this archetype uh because the coolest thing about this is because you're running the um rainbow's end whenever you replace an enchantment you get the mana back so soma oasis when you play it you get the one back if you've enchanted a basic desert already through something like sandscape or the desertification engine um so you know, you replace this desert enchantment, you get one mana refund, and of course you draw the card, and then the minions being created as immortal is really, really strong when you've got awesome things, you know, like Lavish Proxy or Armageddon Angel, or even some of your smaller things that you need to chump block. So Oasis is an excellent, excellent card for that reason. Uh, Shadow of Our Beast, the new buff, makes this card really, really good. Serendipity of Freet, we already talked about, uh, and then I'd say Resupply Caravan is kind of your, your finisher, um, but it also is a defender, so it can defend some higher priority targets. Uh, if you want. Great card. You just got to make sure that the uh, adjacent minions are on a desert. That's one of the nerfs that came into this card. Uh, so just keep an eye out. Still worth playing in here for sure. Xerxian Recruiter, a little bit of card draw. Xerxian Hideout is one of the integral cards, I think, too, because it creates lasting value. Anytime you put a non-ephemeral on it, it gives you a 3-2. That's really good. Tech card for Ghoul, one Dark Passenger, uh, and then, of course, Eager Recruits. These Bazaar is great to get down on one as well. It's just, if you put it right in the middle of the board, or you can put it on the, you know, on two or six uh, great positions to play it. Um, yeah, I like these bizarre a lot. It's a great burn card too because you'll often get them back with Rainbow's End. That's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the game that I'm going to attach. I think it's a pretty cool one. Uh, if you do, please leave a like. And if you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions for this list, if I'm playing it uh, a certain way, or if you notice I do something wrong, hey, I'm still learning Mythgard. So by all means, feel free to point out something you would have done differently. I'm always happy to look at it and see what I can do to improve. It's a very complicated game, and I'm always trying out new decks. So I, I'm not spending as much time on any one deck uh, over the others to really to really dial in and learn them. So I'm love. I'd love to see what you have to say uh, about this. I thought this was just such a cool deck. So props to Investi and all the other people working on refining uh, this mono orange rainbows end list. I think it's an absolute blast to play and feels pretty darn strong. Um, that's it, guys. Oh, and the final thing is, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. It's one of the best ways to support me as a content creator. So I'm uh, I'm always really happy to see when somebody pushes that subscribe button. Hope you enjoy the games. This is the Dune Buddies. All right. 
We're going to give our opponent a lovely little greeting. Hello. Greetings. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going first. Um, it's the choice. I'm going to be playing the Thieves Bazaar. <clears throat> so it's the choice of do I want to throw back like the Xerxian hideout because uh, it'll be able to potentially be drawn with Rainbow Send. I think that's the case. It's either that or Heaven and Back. But I think I'm less likely to play the Xerxian hideout. Oh, it's pretty pretty darn good. Hmm, that's tough. Maybe I just throw back one of my Sandscapes. Or I've got two three drops. Let's throw back one of our three drops here. Again, that's always the tough part is what do we want to play and at what point. I'm going to put the Thieves Bazaar right in the middle because I've got two Sandscapes here and then we'll quickly be able to assemble a full desert uh, lineup. This is going to be what we burn next. We don't really want two uh, Thieves Bazaars quite yet. Um, our opponent on Journey of Souls is going to want to be keeping an eye out for what they're playing. That's a Scourge of Serpents, though. And a Nazca Memorial. Create a 2-2 Striking Viper with Alpha Strike in every unoccupied lane opposite an enemy minion. That's one of the newer cards uh, that has come out. Um... Well, I mean, it, sorry, newer cards that's been updated. So, like, it used to be, like, a two-cost that wasn't very good, and now it's a four-cost that's um, much better, especially if there's a lot of creatures out because of the Alpha Strike, especially. That's a Nazca Memorial. Uh, we're going to throw back this uh, Thieves Bazaar. We're burning it because we already have one, and we're not likely to play it, and, of course, because we're running Rainbow's End. Um, so then let's go ahead and enchant. Let's see, which side of the board would we rather enchant here? Uh, the side with the Nazca, or the side... Yeah, we'll go ahead and enchant um, this side of the board. And boom, we got some deserts going. That's great. Let's go ahead and end turn. So next turn, it'll be the choice of do you want to play like the... I think we'll, we'll probably just play the Serendipity of Freet next turn. Because, and one of the cool things, like I mentioned, uh, with Divination is that you can kind of stack the... Um, Sometimes you can stack the enchantments on top of the deck so you make sure you can get them. That's going to be a battle chef. So this is yellow purple. It'll be quite interesting to see how that pans out. Um, let's go with. Let's burn this sandscape, I think. Uh, next turn's four. I would probably either play parry or I might be inclined to play both of these. Am I playing the Shadow of Our Beast or to Heaven and Back anytime soon? Maybe. Um, I think I'm going to play the Serendipity Freed over here, though, to kind of challenge the... That is a Wax Shield. And they've got two souls. This would come right back to their hand. Wax Shield's way better now because it gives armor and plus one and regen one. Um, I'll tell you what. We're going to take a little bit of a concerted risk here, and we'll, we're going to dodge this Battle Chef. I'm going to go ahead and burn the Xerxian hideout. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to burn the Shadavar beast. And I'm going to play the Serendipity Freet over here. Let's hopefully find a enchantment to put on top. There we go. So we'll put that right on top because that's going to draw back into my hand. Boom. All right. Cool. Lots of options here. I don't always get this many early game cards right in my hand. There's a lot of early game cards in the deck. Sometimes the lines are a little bit more clear, and this is definitely a more, um, I'll say, complicated uh, scenario. I'm also not exactly sure what I'm playing against here. I haven't run into a yellow-purple deck with all these new adjustments yet, so... Here comes a Magpire Squad Leader. Okay, giving that adjacent creature some good old stats. And of course, it is getting minus one uh, by our Thieves Bazaar. <clears throat> um, okay, well, so this is interesting. Um, I have a couple options. I could obviously play like Parry. Uh, I can move this over, and I think I'm probably going to move this over uh, to challenge this Magpire Squad Leader. Um, so that's going to have to trade there. I think then we'll go with the... We'll burn the Thieves Bazaar again. Um, and then we'll go with... I could go Hideout, Eager Recruit, which could be pretty good. Um, let's try that. Let's, let's go, like, Hideout here. 
Um, and it does refund some of my uh, money here. So we'll go eager recruit sandstorm. And that gives us lots of deserts. And we'll go ahead and pass. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Some of these turns ain't easy to figure out. And that may not have even been the right choice. But I'm making that decision because I think one of the best cards is this Xerxian Hideout. That's the reason why I ended up keeping it. It just provides so much resource extension across the course of the game if you get it down early. Um, I mean, anytime we want to play something, parry comes down, bam, we get another 3-2. I mean, that's that's really good. That's really, really good. Now, obviously, we can't put ephemerals on it and keep looping it because it has to be a non-ephemeral minion. Um, but, I mean, we'll, we'll find plenty throughout the course of this game for sure. Heaven and Back's interesting too. Like, that would be potentially interesting to put under our Serendipity Freet if they have a low tempo turn. If they don't have a low tempo turn, then we're probably playing, like, the parry and the recruit or something along the those lines. The perfect ingredients. Okay, that's going to be, oh my, pack mentality. <clears throat> Takes that big trade there. Turn a minion into a canine that has plus two, plus two for each adjacent minion. Okay. Here's our Mardi Core, and that's really interesting because it will um, really help out with removing a lot of their stuff. The problem, of course, is what do I burn? And I'm not entirely sure. The, the cool thing is, obviously, the Mardi Core can remove some of these things, but these walk shields are sitting here, right? Hmm. I mean, I can summon them down and kill this. I really... The Magpire Squad Leader is the biggest concern in my mind. This is just... It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? And if I play the Mardikor here... They're not going to be able to trade into it unless it's with the Magpire Squad Leader. But then, of course, I still have to burn something, which is either my parry or heaven and back. And that that that's not good. I can't really burn my parry. All right, so I think we go... Parry and look for something else to burn. Get a Thieves Bazaar. Can't burn that. And uh, we'll get this. Burn that. Play here. And that's that. Okay. We're just slowing him down with lots of creatures here. We're looking to get this bad boy down to two health so we can zap it with our Mardi Core. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting what they play over the next couple turns. We've burned, like, all of our Thieves' Bazaars now, so any Thieves' Bazaars we pick up, I think we're just... They're, they're, we're going to have to play them. Uh, keep in mind, though, they are if, if we play them onto one of our deserts, they're basically free. They just cost one gem. It's going to be a Vibrant Quetzal. Okay. Awaken, gain two life. And it's got, what, plus one because of the... It's got plus two because of the Nazca Memorial. Right. <laughs> See, there's going to be that walk shield. That's really big for him because he, he really needs to stop this thing from, from dying. <laughs> um, okay. Let's take a look. Biggest issue here, of course, is getting the Mardicor down. I can kill that. The issue is this walk shield goes here and then I can't kill that. I think what I'm doing is I'm Mardicoring this, forcing the trade here. So I'm placing the Mardicor here. Damage that. If he gets the kill, I can at least deal the other three and finish off the Magpire Squad leader. Unfortunately, I'm taking some damage here. Shouldn't be as big of an issue though. So if I go... Uh, we don't need the Desertification Engine. I know he's a really cool card, but... We don't need it here. It's probably not the best card for this deck anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're going to put the Thieves Bazaar here. Refunds, but that's not super important, frankly. We're going to Mardicor. We're going to kill that. 
Um, and we will end our turn. Obviously, that takes that down to three. Oh, there's a Soma Oasis. That's pretty good. That's pretty good because it's going to allow us to get some good trades in with these insurgents. We would have loved to have gotten this down a little bit quicker, but at 15 health, we don't have the time. Got back his battle chef. It's another squad leader. Oof. He's trying to just keep this alive at all costs. All right, we're going to go ahead and kill that. Pew, pew, pew. I was worried he was going to put one of these on because if he'd put one of these on uh, I don't think we would have gotten it I think that might have just been a mistake if he'd put the walk shield on before making the trade might have forgotten about the Mardukor's power there or just really wanted to play another uh, battle chef we're running him out of cards though which is great um, obviously with journey of souls he's going to start recycling some of these cards but hopefully by that point we're able to stabilize with some insurgents and other things lurker and agile okay uh, it's Dark Passenger, and Dark Passenger is really not helpful here. Not going to lie. Um, I think we go, like, Insurgent, because that takes it up to... Th uh, yeah, like, if we go... I go, like, Double Insurgent, then they trade here, and then get three to the face one way or the other. And that's That's, like, not terrible. I think Soma Oasis needs to come down, though, so one of my uh, creatures is at least uh, immortal, plus I get the card draw. So I think this goes here. That's a Serendipity of Freet, which is really nice, especially because it still gets the trade there. So we'll go Serendipity of Freet here on the Soma Oasis. No, here so we generate another Insurgent. Choose a card to put back on top of the deck. We're going to... Uh, oh my. I think Lavish Proxy, right? I don't think they have an answer for Lavish Proxy. We'll burn this. Alright, so this can't die. This can still get the three damage in, but... Oh no, we it can die. That's right, because we summoned it on the... Uh, so, uh, we summoned it here to get the extra insurgent. Maybe we should have put it on the Soma Oasis then. But we're going to put the Lavish Proxy on the Soma Oasis. It won't be able to die for a round. We can then put, like, to heaven and back on, potentially, on the following turn. It's a walk shield. Or we can move it and then enchant to heaven and back. Oh, that's Agile, too. Ouch. Okay, I didn't, I didn't look at that. That makes me feel silly. Good thing we have Lavish Proxy coming up, though. <laughs> the perfect ingredients. The perfect ingredients. Okay. All right. So we actually kind of want this to die. Um, I mean, obviously we can like swift and kill this. Right. So we can move over and kill this if we wanted. Um, oh God. Both of these being agile is very rough. So, okay. Prevent any damage or loss of life that would reduce you below one while this is in play. Obviously, this is going to keep damaging us by one. But I think the double trade is kind of worth it. We just have to make sure this stays alive. Um, so do do we want the double trade? We don't need to put anything here. I could go swift, trade, proxy. And this is still alive to come over here and trade on the following turn. Okay, so this is uh, immortal. Um, yeah, we're gonna pass. Hoping one of these two cards doesn't have anything to do with uh, killing our, our lavish proxy. Obviously we can start putting insurgents down. Uh, we just gotta make sure this stays protected. Um, Right. 
And that doesn't do anything because I have lavish proxy. Yep. He's sitting. He's just sitting here doing this thing. <laughs> I'm so. Uh, I mean, he can't put damage on the proxy from the trades of this turn, anyways. Um, so yeah, next turn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna impel, move over, trade, put down a couple insurgents like directly surrounding the proxy to just try to start protecting him. Um, and heck, we can even go like over here to the bazaar. Maybe he takes this trade. Balance, draw a card for every minion. So draws two cards there. Rough. Okay. And we're just going to sit here at one, I guess. <laughs> All right. That's a Mardicor, which is great. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use this. Scooch over. Trade. We're going to trade like that. Um... I think we're gonna go with the Mardicor could kill this, it's true. Um I also could just go like Yeah, we're gonna go Mardicor here, just keep spawning insurgents, I guess. Uh, because there's, there's not really a better option. Um kill this. We just got so many dang insurgents. I want to keep Devin in back because I do want to slap it under like the Mardicor maybe over here or, or, or something. Or maybe I'll move the proxy, slap it down here. So I don't want to burn this. It is a little awkward right now though. Not going to lie. That's a Serpent's Den. All right. Well, what's cool is that it's got zero. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so that cycled a card, which was good for him. That said, they don't have a lot of... Um, healthier they're going to be looking to try to um capitalize on this nazca memorial turn after turn so we just got to make sure we're we're dealing with it we're, like i think we want to just start shifting proxy over uh slowly i mean obviously we want to get damage on their face too so that, that's it's a little bit of a conundrum not gonna lie that's gonna be a pass there we get a parry okay so if i go like move and then trade with the Mardicor. right uh then i could go um heaven and back like oh i've got swift hmm i could move over and then to heaven and back here but i think we want like don't we want the martyr core there i think we just move him and then we go like yeah we move him we go parry I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to play Heaven and Back, not going to lie. Ooh, that is a resupply caravan, though. That's pretty great. Pick a card to draw. We'll pick up the mm, ghoul, I guess. Serendipity of Freet. Well, the, the card draw loss, or the, the life loss isn't really relevant. Um, let's go with our insurgent over here. Freedom! And I'm, I am going to go ahead and burn to Heaven and Back. I probably should have done that a turn or two ago, but I didn't. Wasn't sure where the what the scope of the game would end up looking like. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's scary. Time to keep shifting them over, I guess. <laughs> uh, we are gonna get some good stuff here with our resupply caravan, though, and he does have regen too. So at the end of our turn, he'll he'll heal up. So we do want to shift him over here next turn and probably not attack with it. That's pretty scary, though. That Nazca Memorial does good work. Does good work. I mean, we might. I don't think we have lethal. We get an. We might actually depends on what he plays here and where he plays it. That's pretty relevant. Because, um, obviously, like, if we get a trade, if we, like, trade with this, with the Mardicor, I get three damage to go wherever I want. Yeah, and plus, the resupply caravan's great because it will, um, defend my lavish proxy. I think that's what we're gonna end up doing. This is a great game. 
very, very close. The perfect ingredients. The perfect ingredients. Oh, there's Armageddon Angel. We don't want to play that. <laughs> uh, so if I go, um, if I go impel, move over, um, then I get to go five, eight. I could go like trade. We definitely need to move this, but I think I want to start putting damage on. So moves over. Um, five, three. I mean, I can keep this alive actually. So I could go like, because this will deal the other damage here. So if I go five into this, I mean, it doesn't matter which one I do it to. And then shift parry. And then we go insurgent. Uh, and we go another insurgent. Here? Or do I? Yeah. Freedom! I don't know. We're going to go with that. <laughs> We're going to go with that. And these thieves uh, bazaars are, are very helpful here in basically defending this. Because these temple snakes are sitting here at zero every time they summon, which is great. Because eventually they'd wear down your trades, you know. We've got this resupply caravan looking to set up lethal on the following turn. Just need to make sure our lavish proxy doesn't get killed by something else. I mean, obviously, like, I don't know, a vicious cycle here could kill it, and then they could just hero power. Like, any direct removal wins them the game. It's just a matter of, do they find it? Are they running it? I mean, this, is, this seems like it's a fairly aggressive build. I don't know. Like, it's kind of peculiar in that sense. Oh. Do they have another one? If they have another Racer and Shadow, that's going to just be GG. Friendly creatures get plus one, plus one. I don't think they do. Oh, man. If they had another racer and shadow there, it would have been over. Whew. Okay. Looks like it's going to be our game then. Um, Because we can go, like, trade. Um, Let's see. Let me make sure I can actually do this uh, because the resupply caravan doubles down on stuff. So if I go, um, like, hmm. I think we need to make sure this gets double attack. So I think if we go trade, dark passenger, and then shift, and then, yeah. So we go trade like that. Dark passenger here is going to give deadly to this creature. We swift over here, uh, swing for two, three, five, resupply caravan, GG, and we had an amazing lavish proxy comeback there, holy crap, <laughs> oh wow. That was killer. Good game. Good game. Lavish Proxy, man. That's a very, very strong card.